All right, let's check out the new batch of finalists from LEGO's BrickLink Designer Program for Adults. This is Series 4, and we have some good ones here from the 230 plus that were submitted. And I noticed something quite obvious that I think you'll spot too, so let's go. First up, we've got something totally different, and this comes from the same genius creator who gave us that amazing Parisian street in Series 1, so you know our expectations are pretty high. Right off the bat, the colors on this thing are perfect. Plus, it's modular like those buildings we all love to put together, and that means that this boat is not just for looking at, it would probably be a blast building it. Peeking inside, the first floor has this neat kitchenette, and there's a deck with stairs that lead up to more of the boat. The next level has the helm and a bunch of merchant goods, and there's even a spot that looks perfect for fishing. I also gotta mention that there's this angled railing at the back with a parrot just chilling there, and it's little details like these that make it so special. And the stairs that lead up to the top next to this round window just add something extra to the whole look and the roof design and detailing are absolutely fantastic. All around, I think it's a solid pick. It's nice to see something this different. And with about 2,000 pieces, I'm guessing it'll be priced around 200 to 230. And that's about what you'd pay for a modular building, which seems fair for how awesome this looks, and it'll look great on any shelf. And what do you think? Is this something that you wanna see out of the BrickLink Designer Program? Is this unique enough to make you wanna buy it? And if you're enjoying our content, hit the like and subscribe buttons. It goes a long way. We're a very small channel in an insanely saturated space, so every little bit helps. If you wanna go the extra mile, hop on to Patreon. You can hop on there for free, or you can become a paid member. You totally don't have to, but I appreciate your support. I'm so glad that you're here, and let's keep on going. All right, next up is this impressive Wild West train. And guess what? It's from the same designer who nearly sold out of their general store in the first series. Trains are a huge deal in the LEGO world, and since this is the second one that they've picked in the BrickLink Designer program, I have a feeling this one's going to be a hit. From the first look, this train is just stunning. It's set up on a track surrounded by desert plains that set up the scene. The colors are spot on with red, brown, and black, and the silver engine is just perfect. The other cars in the train are just as awesome, showing off some weathering on the roofs that look real. This thing is impressive from every angle and would make an amazing display piece. There's even a windmill and a water tower that brings the whole setup to life. The creator thought of everything like the water tower refilling the steam boiler on the train. It's just details like that you gotta love. And the interiors are just as thought out. The passenger car is fancy and we even have a spot for hauling a horse, which totally surprised me. So given how many fans love Lego trains, I have a feeling this will sell out rather quickly. It has an old school vibe to it and it fits on standard Lego tracks, which is really neat. The only thing is that it has 2,700 pieces, so I'm hoping it doesn't cost more than $300. Next up, we're diving even further into the past with a medieval seaside market. This creation marks the first medieval themed winner in this series, and honestly, is looking like another hit. So what's the scoop on this one? Well, it has a fresh twist on the classic castle by throwing in a seaside market. The whole setup is pretty big and comes in an L shape, which is rather unique and gives it a lot of character. Color-wise, we've spiced things up with awnings that pop against the usual castle gray, topped off with some slick red on the towers. They even added bits to the water to make it look like waves are crashing against the shore and the market stalls all look great. They also included a boat as an extra docked right at the market. And the way they designed the towers and stairways gives the whole scene some real depth. Normally, I'm all about those smooth studless designs, but keeping the studs here actually makes sense. It keeps the piece count and the price from going sky high. This has some height too, with one tower standing taller than the rest, giving it a grand look. You can take the whole thing apart in sections, making it easy to move around, and that's a pro move right there, showing how much thought went into designing this beast. There's even a horse and carriage adding some life to the scene and the entrance is decked out with greenery making it welcoming and inside is just as detailed. There's a cozy interior with simple furnishings like a stump stool for writing, which is a nod to simpler times. And those wine barrels with grapes on top are a perfect touch for the era. Overall, with its popularity, I'm betting this will be supported rather quickly. Hopefully we don't get too many medieval sets and get tired of them, but I mean, when you think about it, is it any different than adding another modular building to your collection? With just over 2,000 pieces, we're probably looking at another one in a 200 plus range, 
but given what we see here, I think that would make sense. All right, let's roll into another medieval display, but this one's got a twist. Remember the mountain fortress from series one that sold out super quick? Well, the same designer is back, but this time with a scene that's all about medieval battles. The first thing you see are these fantastic structures. They're the kind of stuff that just pulls you right into the scene. There's a drawbridge and some seriously neat design on the shields and flags, plus the whole thing's on wheels, which is super cool. Inside, there's a blacksmith and an herbalist, each busy with their crafts. We also get a knight's quarters with a weapon rack that looks legit and another quarters next to it that's got a different vibe with strings in the corners for extra detail. Outside you've got blockades and a portable catapult because you can't have a siege without these. Taking a closer look the herbalist station is laid out very well making you appreciate the thought that went into designing this and the cast of minifigures are a pretty good mix too. Now about that catapult so yes it does work and it can launch about five feet and we can also see that there's a field kitchen and a small tent adding to the overall scene. So here's the deal. There's 2,500 pieces here and at first glance it seems like it's a lot smaller compared to others but there is a lot of pieces in the set. I really hope that this one is around 150 to 175, but realistically, we're probably looking at something higher. I don't know, what do you think? Would this be worth a higher price tag given what we're getting here? Okay, next up we have a breathtaking building that's a part of a unique theme. If you recall the Ocean House from Series 2, it's the same designer and they're not afraid to mix it up with their own creative world. This one belongs to their Mountain Windmill Collection and it's pretty cool. The first thing that I noticed was the brilliant color scheme and the amazing techniques used on the roofs. From what I can see here, I counted about like six different rooms that you can peek into. The buildings have this white and tan thing going on topped with orange and yellow roofs. And there's this cozy little gray hut that just fits perfectly. Looking at it from another angle, you catch the rock formations and a vine climbing up one of the towers, which adds a nice touch of nature. Then there's this gorgeous bridge linking the two parts of the model, making you appreciate how well everything fits together. And then we have this waterfall and terrain around it. It's like a little fantasy world with vines, flowers, and crystals everywhere. Flipping this around reveals an open back, which is a hit or miss with fans, but it does give you easy access to all those detailed interior spaces. And we get more rooms inside than what you might think at first glance. Diving into the interiors, there's so much character and storytelling packed into every corner, and it's builds like these with their rich backstories that stand out in the LEGO universe. Pull the minifigures out of any set and you lose like half of the magic. And they're doing everything here from reading books to hanging out in these beautifully crafted spaces. With around 2,700 pieces, my guess is we're looking at a price tag around 250 to 280. It's gonna definitely be a contender for funding, with the stiff competition from other sets in this batch. Okay, so all of these are pretty big with over 2,000 pieces each, and it makes me wonder, should they have included a smaller set in the mix? It'd be nice to have something a bit less daunting and quicker to put together, and also something that everyone can have access to. Also, are two medieval sets in one batch overdoing it? I mean, don't get me wrong, these are really cool, but what's your take? Would you have swapped one of these medieval sets for something else? We're looking at February of 2025 to pre-order these, so maybe we'll all forget by then, and I don't know, I guess it depends on what comes out. There were so many amazing creations that could have made the cut, and I went through my top 50 picks from Bricklink Series 4 in this video here, where you can go check out the hidden gems that unfortunately didn't make it. So I will catch you there.